from there somewhere. things that we sometimes take casually and don't understand very well. Uh, it, it's important, it's important. Uh, just before I get started, uh, one of the people here has said, why don't we start the topic by discussing before having children, actually before getting married. So uh, it's going to be obvious what you need to do. If you know what you need to do later, then you know what to do now. It's going to be obvious. And the thing is, this is a research topic. All right? When most of us here are academ academics, and we are in the uh, academia, and eventually uh, many of us are going to be uh, instructors, or lecturers, or teachers, or professors. And uh, what kind of training did you have to become a lecturer? Basically not. You didn't get. We, we don't get any training. We just uh, get the experience of our professors that taught us, and uh, we've seen the good and the bad, and we try to kind of uh, work our way through, and we do our best to uh, make the best out of what uh, knowledge we have. And maybe occasionally we'll get some advice here or there, or watch uh, a video on our, or read a paper on how to be a good professor. Same thing about parenting. What experience do you have about being a, a parent? 
It's not like uh, being a student in classes. You've seen so many professors here. You've seen only one model, which is your house, right? Or maybe some friend's house, or maybe some relative's house. And you don't see it that well because you don't spend too much time there. You haven't really seen the intimate relationship between uh, the parents and the children, or, at, or the parents and, and each other. The only house you have an experience with is your own. You've seen only your father and your mother, and how they dealt with things, and how they dealt with you, and how they dealt with your brothers and sisters. So we even have less experience or less exposure in this regard. And all of a sudden, we have children of our own, and what do we do? We mess it up, right? And then we uh, try to fix it, and believe it or not, all right? Fixing something is not as easy as starting to try it from the beginning, and we all know that. You take a, a suit to the uh, tailor and tell him, fix that suit, and says, no, I'll, pay, I'll make you a new suit. I'm not going to fix an old one. Because taking it apart, or, or, or a carpenter, or, or, any, or anything, you know, fixing is much harder than making new. So to, to start things right is, is important. And uh, again, I refer back to the academic environment. We all are researchers, and, and we can research things. And we find the uh, solutions, and we, we judge uh, other people's work. We spend the time doing that, and we go to the library, and we uh, read books and, and all that. But for parenting, we don't do that. Uh, I know what to do. Uh, seen my father do this and he didn't do it right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna fix it. Alright? Or I've seen my mother yell at me for that and I'm not gonna yet I'm not gonna yell at my children for, for the same thing. So we don't take parenting uh, as a research. We don't take it as a as as a, as a knowledge base that we we need we need to, to study as well. And as a result we experiment and we find problems and we try to fix them and we may not even fix them, we may even make them worse set. So uh, <clears throat> I have a few points here that uh, I wrote based on uh, uh, you know uh, several articles that I read before and my own experience and the lectures or the talks that I gave and, and all that. The first one which I uh, used in one of the meetings with the brothers here, in one of the sessions, and upset everyone, was that we are not raised well. And we need to start by that admission. You know, you have to convince yourself that you were not raised well, and therefore you need to learn how to raise your children well. And with that in mind, we also continue by saying is, if I don't have it, I can't give it. That's the shape right off here. If I don't have something, I can't pretend in front of my children that I have it, and therefore I can't expect them to have it. I can't expect them to acquire a character that I don't have. I can't expect them to acquire a skill or... I'm sorry. I learned to put my little one to sleep. So, Kaku uh, the right? And I, I mentioned this before also that, uh, that fixing something is, is very difficult. So we better try to avoid making a mistake rather than getting to the situation of the Right. So these are three things I like. I have to lay down. Uh, before I continue, one fourth one, one very important one. I'm not a scholar of the topic. I'm a student that reads and studies and do my best, and I try to convey the knowledge I acquired of this. So uh, I could very well be off uh, uh, the the, uh, the norm scale, as as you may you may define. So. So what's the reason for having kids? Why do we have kids? If we're going to raise them, then we better know what are we trying to do with them. Or what is 
just born and they are here, you know, so we've got, got to do something about them, or was there a good reason for having kids? Right? We have to identify that first. We, we need to ask, ask ourselves that question. Do we have kids because everyone else has kids? Or do we have kids because they are going to help me in the farm when they grow up and, you know, uh, plow the soil and seed the, uh, you know, or they're going to stand with me in the shop and help me uh, do my work. You know, why do we have kids? Are you going to ask me to do chores when I get old? Or, or have something to play with when they are little? You know, that's a very important question, believe it or not. And I don't think we ask ourselves that question seriously enough. No. Right. Give me a minute here to think about that. Go, go, go. So, okay, we have kids. All right? And we claim that we love them. What kind of love do we have for our children? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll go. In my definitions, there are two types of love. Consumer love. Oh, I love that. that it fights so well and I enjoy it. You know, the kind of writing, it doesn't give me a hard time, it doesn't soil my pocket and it doesn't dry very quickly. I like my glasses, they help me see. I like the piece of chicken, delicious and nutritious and, and helps me uh, get energy. That's that kind of love, consumer love. Yeah? I like my wife, I love her. She cooks very well and she cleans my clothes. And she gives me company. That's consumer love. And the other kind of love is responsibility love. Right? The kind of love that uh, you feel you must have towards the environment around you. Public love. Okay? I love my brother because I want to see him well. Not because he's doing something for me. That, that kind of love is important. So our love for our children should be the second kind more than the first kind. It's not because I just enjoy them. It's because they are going to be the future. And our responsibility towards them is to make them the best they could be. As good Muslims, that they are going to be the carrier of the flag. They are going to be the uh, propagation of the yeah. Word of God, you know, I, I have to think about that. That's the kind of love I must have towards my children. So it's a responsibility rather than uh, benefit. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it's a, a bigger goal than just the immediate goal. In this regard, my love for my children should be continuous, should be and continually assured, should be absolute, with no expectation of return. With no expectation of return. With no expectation of return. Okay. So, I'm not doing it because I'm expecting something. Or when they grow up, they are going to do this. You know, when I get ill, they will be there next to me. That's not why I love them. I love them because I want them to be the best they could be. Good worshippers, good <coughs> members of society, good uh, people. So here's a pride. He's priding them to be quiet. <laughs> so, um, how do we do it right? How do we do it right? Um, you remember the four elements of success that I uh, constantly talk about, that Surah Class uh, focuses on them? Iman, Amal Salihat, 
التواصي بالحق التواصي بالصلاة these are four elements of success failure is easy it's an or function if you remember the image that we gave any mistake will lead to failure right but success you need all elements to be there you need uh, all four iman belief to believe in what you do to believe in the purpose to believe in the mission amal salihat to do the righteous deeds to commit to uh, righteousness to proper proper uh, uh, conduct at the al haq enjoying what's right and 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 and, and forming a, a coherent and cohesive group that believes in that at the wasib al again forming at the wasib al that's gonna it's gonna yeah get out of uh, control in between. Yeah. Okay. But the was the sub which is again being together in in, in uh, persistence and perseverance. So Iman was the first one. We have to believe in what we're doing, why we're doing it, why we're having children and why we're raising them and what you know we have to believe in that. We have to have an answer, convincing answer, deep within ourselves, unwavering answer of, of this question. Now, Amal Salihat, there's always a question about what is Salihat. Uh, you know, we know the story of Musa al Khidr and, and, and what al Khidr was doing properly, Musa was thinking that it was not proper, right? So, what is the reference? What is the reference and what is Salihat? So Amal Salihat have to have a reference. We have to have Marja'iya. Okay? We have to agree on what is uh, our constitution. Okay? If we differ on something, who is going to settle that difference? At Tawasi al Okay. once we have Iman and Amal Salihat, then we all need to get together and enforce this. Right? And possible sub, we discuss these elements in the whole. So that means the people involved in the raising of the children have to agree on this. Have to all have iman, have to have all belief, have to do the righteous thing according to the proper reference, according to the standard that they agree to, and then they coherently or cohesively uh, approve that and support each other in this. That means at least the parents, the father and the mother, have to be in sync, right? If we use the terminology, or in, in coherence or in cohesion about these four things. So if the father and mother have different opinions about things, it's not going to work. Something will work, all right? But, you know, the ideal model that we are talking about here is not going to work. So we have to have a good, you know, uh, coherence between the father and mother on, this, on, this, on these points. The kids are smart and they're going to sense that daddy and mommy or papa and mama or father and mother uh, have a difference and they are going to use that and split in the crack, all right? So uh, we, we have to be careful about this. Father and mother have to sit down often, alone, together and review things and agree on what they need to do. Especially if there is an issue, how are we going to deal with it? How do we react to things? What kind of terms do we use to describe things? If the child makes a mistake, do we tell him it's wrong, or he shouldn't do it, or it is haram, or you are going to get punished? You know, what kind of response do we have for the different things? We have to really agree on the uh, procedure, right? 
just like again the researchers, again I go back to the researchers, you put the system together and this block and that block have to have the handshake, have to have the full agreement of this input is going to be output from there and this signal is going to come from there and, and, and this number is going to match that number, you know, there has to be a complete uh, agreement between the components of the process and the components are here, the father and mother. If there are older brothers that are involved, if there are other family members that are involved, especially grandparents, they are very tough to uh, convince, you know, uh, don't worry, you know, you don't know what to do. And, and the grandparents take over and they mess things up. You know, you have your plan and your wife and, you know, you uh, agree to do things and comes grandpa and says something or grandma and says something and, and it's completely off what, what your plan was. Or spoil the kid with some candy or what have you, all sorts of things. Because it's not just the parents that raise the kids. The school, the television, the neighbors, the uncles, the aunts, the friends, the children in the street, what they see uh, when, you, when you go out and outing, all these kind of things are uh, influences you cannot control. So at least what you can control is your home environment, so you start with that. So at the fair home, by the way. Stable homes. Children have to see a stable home. Right? If they see a house full of discomfort, issues, fights, threats, uh, wife is upset and she's gonna leave the house, or the husband is upset, he slams the door and goes to the office and you know, all these kind of things. There are going to be uh, things of, of serious impact and a negative impact on raising the children. <coughs> the house has to have a uh, stable, uh, nurturing home. You know, just like um, those of you who are uh, caring for animals and, and stuff like that, you know, you, you, they, they play soft music for the chickens, so they can grow in a healthy environment, you know. So, what about our own children? I'm not talking about soft music for our children, but I'm talking about quiet voices, uh, free from uh, shouts and, 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 and fights. Mawadda wa rahma. Okay, Mawadda wa rahma. You know, the ideal home is the one that is built on love and affection and care rather than it's my right to do this and your duty to do that. That rights and duties ought to be done or dealt with before a judge that is signing the divorce paper. All right? So it's not a matter of rights and duties, it's a matter of love and affection. The other thing also is um, stable, steady image for the parents. You know, moody people. You don't want to be moody. Today you are happy and joyful and you hug your children and you kiss them the second day, something in the office is bothering you or uh, the food uh, didn't turn out good or the you know, whatever it is, something got messed up and you are upset and, and you are not the same. Now just leave me alone now, I'm, 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 I'm very upset, don't talk to me now. Right? No. Children don't have any, uh, you know, uh, reason to, uh, to, to be dealt that way, right? So, you have to have a steady and stable image before your children. Dad is loving, mommy is loving and caring, always, no matter what. No matter what happens in the office, no matter what happens with the other neighbors, no matter what happens with the friend that uh, gave you bad news or the uh, thing that came in the mail that is upsetting, you know, children should not feel any of that. That's something that you should take alone and you uh, deal with separately. Also, 
a stable and, and, and steady image means also that you are the same person. Not just all the time, but also inside the house and outside the house. Right? If you pretend to be something inside the house, and you are not the same person outside the house, the children feel the difference. Right? You are very nice when you deal with people in the stores, you know, are very nice when you uh, go to work, you are very nice when you do this, but at home you are a grouch, you are grumpy, you are something else, or vice versa. Right? Or, you know, you answer the phone and you are talking to a friend about that other you know, you can sell that other person here or something, you know. All these kind of things, you know, children have to be immune to all these uh, fluctuations in personality. If you are, excuse me, ugly, then be ugly all the time, right? But, you know, obviously you are supposed not to be that way. You are supposed to be <coughs> decent, uh, well-behaved, well-mannered, like I said. You know, if you, if you don't have it, you can't give it. So if you want to give your children good manners, uh, steady personality and all that, that means you have to have that. So nothing should raise your temperature or rush the blood to your face or shake you or what have you because that's in, that influences your, your, your children. So no matter what happens, if I'm sitting with my child and the phone rings, I'm not going to answer the phone because that's my child time, right? If, uh, you know, many of us will, will, will do it all the time, you know, you go with your child somewhere and all of a sudden you meet a friend and the child is in the background, he's gone, he doesn't exist, the friend is more important at this point, or you get a phone call, it's very important, you know, uh, and, 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 and nothing is as important as the feelings of your child when you neglect a child uh, during that, that moment or during those and unfortunately it's not a moment usually it takes a long time with children measure it's a long long time like my daughter always says how many minutes you know? and I tell her two minutes you know it's too much uh, a couple more things uh, if the child makes a, a mistake or makes something good or what have you, we have to be consistent in describing those things. Otherwise, we'll confuse the child. Right? If sometimes I tell them that's good, and another time say, oh wow, that's so excellent, you know, you know, if it's the same thing, you know, why is good now? Why is so excellent? It's another time. And some other times it's, it's so bad, right? You know, we have to think before we open our mouth and, and utter any word, this brain here has to work hard and, and be consistent. Can you imagine that you are talking to your computer and used different commands? And you meant the same thing. You meant the same exact thing, but you gave different commands. Computer is going to get confused, right? Children is the same way. You know, they get programmed and you program them, and they are not going to be more than what you program them at this point. Right? So if you program them to have the word good and use something else, then it will take them time to appreciate that other word and if they can mash them together and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm using good and excellent as an example. That, that you know, may not be a good example, but the meaning is what I'm referring to. And Try to describe the act, not the person. What you just did here is considered a lie. Oh, you are a liar. How dare you lie? Right? There's a big difference between the two. Right? You try to describe the act. Okay. You just dirtied your hand. Oh, you have dirty hands. Big difference. Big difference in impression too, right? Okay, you played in the dirt, and as a result, you got some germs in your hand, and these germs are gonna get to your body, and you may get sick. You see, may, not you will get sick, right? Because you may not get sick. 
Oh, Daddy, why? He doesn't understand. I know better. I played with the dirt and I did not get sick. But all what I said, you may get sick. I have to be careful what I say. I have to be careful how I describe the act or the act or, or, or the behavior uh, rather than just rush any words that come from the back of my mind, come from my history, the way I was raised or the way I saw someone else was raised or the way I saw it on TV or whatever, you know. We have to research it and think about it and try to be consistent. Consistency until you diversify your child and you get him to school. When you grow up, obviously, you need that diversification. You need more terminology because they're going to hear different things. Dad's going to describe it that way, and mom's going to describe it that way, and the teacher describes it that way. So they put these together and they understand that good and uh, excellent and, and, and merry are, are, you know, different words for meaning the same thing. But at least in the beginning, I have to be consistent. I, my, my little one, uh, when, when she was nine months, right? I never took a piece of paper from my tables or uh, tablecloth or moved anything from, you know. She was to go around and try to pull the tablecloth. Okay, I let her pull it down and then we put it together again. And you know, she learned finally that this tablecloth belongs here and she shouldn't put it. Okay. Oh, don't do that. Mother, take your daughter away. You know, she keeps pulling this thing. Maybe you should put this tablecloth away. You know? No. So, basically, uh, We, we have to uh, use uh, the, the proper description for actions that are not insulting, that are not demeaning, because this is the worst that we can do, is insult or demean our children. They will learn, and in turn, they are going to use it. And in turn, you know, it's going to come back to haunt us. Right? As we tell them uh, a description, they, they can come back and, you did that, you are, she will come back and watch me do something. Oh, you did that, you are. The same thing. But for, the, for the little one, oh, it's just, daddy told me that, so it, it, it's not that bad. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it to him, tell him the same thing, or tell it to someone else. Okay? And we better use the right terms and the right descriptions, not just be consistent in them, we also have to use the right terms. We often tell our children, don't do that, it's haram. We do that? Well, in this message, in this spot, right there, in the middle right here, one of the Imams of the masjid, one of the kids was running, he says, Why don't stop running in the masjid, it's haram. And I was standing next to him. So I held his lips with my hands. I still remember right here, in this spot here. I held his lips. These are the lips of an imam. You know what it means, the word haram, to come out of the lips of an imam? He says, we do that all the time in Egypt. I said, okay. That doesn't make it right. This is why. <laughs> huh? This is the, the reason for French funeral in Egypt. <laughs> it's very common. We, we after all, uh, if you do that, you will go to hell. You want God to love you? Do this. Well, they don't know what God is yet. They have no idea. And you are rushing, using uh, disturbing things, and, 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 and it's not consistent. So, is it haram? If it is not haram, then it must be halal. Now, 
put yourself in a child <laughs> mind, you know, like I said, you are programming, you are dealing with a programmed machine that you programmed yourself. Okay, have they reached the point where they understand this upper level language or <laughs> machine language, what have you, you know? So we're talking about on a machine language level, right? I still remember some of my computer basics. So you can't use terminology beyond their appreciation because otherwise if you scare them and, and use all these uh, languages, they're going to be confusing and they're going to create negative images and, and eventually it, it's going to uh, fire back. And again, uh, you can have grades of description. Like, like Mustafa said, the word makro, right? Okay, that's a grade of of description for an act. You know, but use language that the child can understand, that needs the same meaning, or you may want to use the same word, and the child will understand. Eventually, you know, they listen to that word, and eventually becomes affiliated in their minds with some level of disapproval, right? Okay. So, you know, I, I, uh, I, I would say, you know, that's not desired. I, I, I don't like you to do this. I disapprove of you doing that. You shouldn't do that. Absolutely not. You should never do that. You know, these are different levels that I use and the child will relate to them. But I have to be consistent again. If I use them haphazardly, obviously they are going to all go all over the place and, and, and they are not going to work. So again, we are talking about uh, a proper model. For this. So these are, uh, this is a, 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 an overall without referring to a particular age or, you know, uh, or a, a particular uh, situation. And I thought I'll start with those and then we can get into uh, the different age groups. And uh, I don't know if we, how much we should do today. We promised to talk about 20 minutes, and it's been over 20 minutes now, right? Yeah, because of that to help But, <laughs> but before, before, I, before I get to that, let me, let me leave you with one thought here. <coughs> let me leave you with one thought, okay? And then we can get uh, to uh, continue next uh, week, inshallah. Uh, the one thought is... Uh, What's the age of adolescence? What do you want? I don't These are the Okay, 13 to 22, adolescence according to the Egyptian. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you think? Right. is less than 18. 12 to 18. Yeah, 10 to 18. 10 to 18. The Western culture says 10 to 18. All right. Any other definitions? <laughs> 7 to 20. Hmm? From 7 to 20. 7 to 20. Alright. When do we consider a person mature enough to start a life on his or her own? What what age? 18. 18. Mature enough? No, no, start the life on their own? No, he's no he's but he can. He's just, uh... Yeah, here, here, here. <laughs> 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 Someone is anxious here. Someone is anxious here. There's difference between you can 
and we consider that person mature enough to have a life of his own. Probably 20 something. Hmm? After 20. After 20. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> In Egypt, kids live with their parents until they get married, and typically that's uh, the upper twenties, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes even the upper thirties. <laughs> okay. Well, the thought that I like to leave with you is that if in Islam a person is responsible for God at the age of puberty. Shouldn't that person be responsible before the society? Yeah. Yes. He should. So if we are raising our children to be mature and able to have a life of their own at the age of 20 some, then we are doing something wrong. Alright, questions and answers. So we get to the age groups next time, inshallah. Now, I'm not a scholar to answer questions. It's a discussion, so those of you who have comments, ideas, agreements, disagreements, you know, feel free. I don't think the government will have a name. I said... I can translate it for you. I know the translation, but I want to if, if concentrate on the main. If in Islam, a person is responsible before God at the age of puberty and sin in the law, shouldn't that person be responsible before society at the same age? I, I said I he, he should. He should. Mm -hmm. yes. And the next sentence? Oh, the next sentence? Yeah. Oh, I, I leave that for you. <laughs> <laughs> no! He, uh, you said if, if it was... Uh, like we we did it like this, it will be wrong or something like. That. Oh, I see. Okay, I can't remember how I said it, but what I meant was, uh, then we are doing it all wrong. All right. If we are not doing that, then what? Something is wrong. Yeah, something is wrong. Yeah. I got. Oh, I have a question. Question. I asked it myself many times. Um, Plus and I. Uh, so I, I, I want to ask a controversial question. Uh, it's a major question for me, for my kids. Um, regarding the bad and good things in the community for our children, should we keep them away from these things or we should expose them to both sides and then filter things for them at home? Or should I keep them away from this? But sometimes um, I try to keep them away from all the bad things. But in the school, in the school bus, they hear bad things, bad words. Even the driver of the bus, sometimes he will, he opens a screen for a dancer or something. So I don't know what to do in this case. <laughs> This is a difficult question at the same time it's very easy. We expose our children all the time. We, we actually ourselves are exposed to uh, danger and wrong things all the time. And if we are sheltered and immune from all these kind of things, we would never develop the immunity to be able to continue. You know, you do uh, sports and you subject yourself or your child or whoever plays sport to injury and harm and, 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 and this and that. The minute you go out of your house, you are exposed to uh, a car uh, accident or, or, or this or that. Right? So, the thing is, you cannot shelter your children from the wrong things, otherwise they will never develop immunity. 
you know, the minute that they get to this later, this is going to be a big disaster. At the same time, you don't take serious risks, right? When you go out to the field to play uh, soccer, you put on the shin guards and you, uh, you ride your bike, you put the helmet on, you ride your car, you put the safety belt on, so uh, you don't do stunts with your car in the middle of the road. You know? <laughs> so, obviously, you have to measure the amount of risk So, you can create the risk, okay? You, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if your baby never gets exposed to cold weather, you bundle the baby up all the time, and when you go out, and you know, you're so careful, they never uh, see too much sun, otherwise their skin gets burned, and you know, being too, they never uh, get a, a, any germs or, 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 or uh, viruses, what have you, you know, they have to get some to develop the immunity so they can be able to tolerate it and go healthy uh, despite. So you, you have to measure how much. And it's a judgment. And sometimes you misjudge and an accident happen and you try to be careful next time. Right? Obviously, there are certain things that we know very well that this is way out. Okay? And there are certain things that are mild. Let, let them have that. At the same time, as soon as I have them get that, they get the dose of uh, uh, medicine. Right? The dose medicine is ready. Right? I'm not going to wait until figure out, oh, they, they got sick, let me see how I can treat them. No, I, I have to have the medicine ready. Okay? I, I let my little one... Uh, eat hot pepper, at the same time I have a cup of milk ready for her in the background, okay? I let her touch the stove and I have a piece of ice to uh, help her, you know, cure, uh, cure the, the bird, you know. So, I let her do calculated risks and, I, and I'm watching and I, and I have the medicine ready for that. So, you do your best. Just like that. Uh, but I, I don't believe in, in, in isolation, in complete isolation. It doesn't work. Other discussions, other questions, please. Question? You need that or can you raise your voice? Yeah, I can raise my voice. Okay. I'll repeat the question. You need this? Yeah, I can raise my voice. I, I, okay. okay, for example, uh, you know that divorce is uh, something that Islam didn't uh, like, but it's happened sometimes. Okay, uh, for example, if a couple has a child, and, uh, and uh, they get divorced. Okay, my question is, what is the best way uh, to raise this child, to, to raise this children uh, from this father, from this mother, from, her, from his mother? Uh, how they should uh, uh, help the children to grow up, you know, in the the best way, how Islamic way, you know. That's I don't you know, get the idea about that. Uh, the question is about raising uh, children uh, between parents that have been separated. What is the best Islamic way to raise those children? And I don't have a, an answer because I'm not an expert in that topic. And, and actually, it's it's a very tough question. And I, I, I uh, you know, if anyone here has any uh, good answers or good discussions in this topic. I, would, I, I have like a, two friends that have been separated and they have one kid. Uh, they are they are doing okay now because I think maybe like partially the only thing that made things to go better with the kid is that I think just both parents just decided not to get married. Okay, so uh, the parent did, 
did not get married and the the uh, the, the woman or, or, or the wife did not get married and the husband did not get married okay so there's no like you know external you know uh, uh, persons that you know that, that that can affect the kid okay so and now the kid is living with, with the mother so the mother is taking care of the kid and the kid also visits his like uh, his parents uh, his his uh, dad's uh, relatives and everything so they did not cut the relationship like you know completely so and I think the, the kid maybe is, is almost like maybe five now uh, so I'm not sure if he understands that the, the parents are separated or not but apparently this did not affect him very very badly he's learning well he's, he's doing well he's, he's seeing both his like mother's you know relatives and his father's relatives and the, the father is just here in the States and the mother is back in Egypt uh, and the father just visits uh, Egypt like every year so um, uh, so I, I think maybe the, the, the kid right now does not know that they are separated just you know that dad is working abroad and mother is at home so maybe part of the solution is that you know you should not let the kid get this like very tough fact right now that we are separated and you know I I and your dad will not live together like anymore and such things because it's very tough, you know, but, you know, uh, taking, taking that the mother is a good one and the father is a good one so they will not, you know, uh, talk badly about each other and so that the kid will still have like, you know, a balanced, you know, uh, emotional status, you know, that is, is not affected badly by this. Uh, but. You, you could have like another bad situation that the mother may not be that good and the dad may be not that good and then I think the kid will get affected really bad. Um, so, yeah, this is the same way that, you know, the, the, the separated mother and father should behave well in front of the kid. You know. uh, but if, even, even people married in the same house should have respect for each other at least in front of the kid. And again, like I said, pretending doesn't last long. So <coughs> if you pretend, it's going to slip and they're going to see the truth. So it better be the truth. So you stop at this point. Uh, you are invited to have this uh, delicious... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> modest, modest, modest. We are like... Uh, this is like what is going uh, with our financial situation, so enjoy your time and inshallah we will continue to see